Alrighty, welcome traders. You know with the drill, um, as always, September is over. I am filming this on October 4th, or not 4th, October 1st. September is over and let's jump right in. So I'm actually quite happy with my September. Uh, I'm pretty stoked about it, pretty content, pretty happy. Reason being is because September and August have just never been those kind of months for me, right? And, I, and I've talked about this on Twitter recently about just, other, or even some, some recent videos, just about seasonality, right? December through February and a little bit of March is always like the, not always, but it is typically the hottest time. And, you know, fall, call it, you know, July through September, uh, maybe even a little October is never that great, but specifically August is definitely my worst. September can always be a little bit better, but I expect to face the same rough challenges from August. And so to come out up 60 grand, um, every week green, except for the last week, um, a lot of good trades that led to me, you know, having a few five figure wins to kind of get to this point. I I'm pretty stoked about it, right? Everything stats wise is pretty good. Um, only one loss over 10 grand, which happened on the last day here, which is way better if you've been following my journey, which is way better than previous months. Um, September really is the month that put me green on the quarter, right? Um, I'm not one, to, I'm not one to really look into quarters, but if you just look at July, negative 32 grand, and then August up 21 grand, you know, looking at a bigger picture time frame, you know, I'm down 10 grand over two months. And so had September been tough, it's like I could have been call it break even for a three month period, which again is fine. It's not the end of the world. But again, if we like to be consistently profitable, I'd like to think every quarter I'm, I'm growing in terms of, of, of profits. Right. Um, and so September did that, right. We, we are up and call it now, like it's 50 grand over the quarter. So that's pretty cool. Especially specifically because it's again one of the tougher quarters for me, one of the tougher times of the year. But without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, let's go to the first trade of the first, which is I mean literally a third of my profits, which was pretty cool. And I kind of knew this was going to be a significant portion, specifically because like this one trade pretty much already put me over, or this one day I should say, put me over uh, profits of all of August. So that was pretty cool. So what trade was that? That was ICCT. Um, I honestly forget the beginning of this trade. I, I don't know. I believe it was a reverse split or a ticker change. The point is they changed their share structure, which changed the amount of shares that are are in the float, obviously. And very similar to, what was the ticker? It was, um, what is it? Cosm, C-O-S-M, I got a couple months ago. Uh, one of the brokers, I think we found out it was Robinhood, didn't convert their shares correctly. So it ended up leading to a lot of shares being short and they're particularly on their books. And the stock squeezed huge because they just needed to get out. Apparently, ICCT, I believe this was the same scenario where some broker or some firm did not, not firm, but I guess broker, um, did not transfer over or did not transition into the new share structure effectively, um, resulting in a quite a few shares still being short, leading to this huge squeeze from pretty much two bucks as high as 20. It actually went much higher if we go into the intraday here. on Actually, it was the after hours of the 30th. I think it went to like 42 bucks maybe 40, something like that. But um, on the actual 31st here, if we go in on August, right? Um, and it came down, right? It came down after hours, closed around like 20, 20, mid 20s, low 20s. Did the same thing in, in pre-market, but faded all the way down. We got our morning spike. It failed hard. Um, I believe I started getting short. I remember I took a, uh, actually a, a cut paper cut on the short and then reshorted. Um, spiked perfect double top. I was actually kind of scared in the moment. I thought I was going to have to cut it over this highs, but it held perfectly and then died uh, and then faded even lower the next day. Uh, and I covered you know the next day after that for a nice profit. And we'll look at the trades here. This was the actual day, the first day, I should say. Um, again, got short out the open when I thought it was pretty weak. You know, if we look at the first candle here, you know, specifically, you know, a lot of volume came in and once I gave it, you know, halfway through the minute, it just couldn't really get going and then immediately halted down. And so when it, right before it halted down, I just kind of got short because I'm like, this is weak. Like I was expecting kind of that spike or squeeze out the open. Um, granted, it had to halt down and then it happened. So it's kind of unfortunate because I did, I'm taking a small paper cut. You know, I added it out right out of the open there or right out, the, right out of the halt after the open and then I cut it, but then reshorted. I immediately knew once we, not immediately knew, but I had a good feeling after four minutes in a row of that squeeze, that was the squeeze I was looking for. And so once it actually then started selling off very quickly, uh, reacted to that and got short again, then added once it bounced. So again, same thinking here when, you know, I short because it's like, it's heavy, it's not squeezing and then it halts down. I, you know, you see I shorted right out of that open pretty much, pretty much right when it started any kind of strength, which doesn't look, look that great because I pretty much shorted right out of the open price. Um, I didn't want to make that same mistake. And so when it halted down, 
I didn't want to just short out of the open. I wanted to see it bounce and then fail, which is why you see me kind of waiting a bit. You wait for me to see that bounce fail. It pulls. I cover these ads quickly here because I do think some kind of bigger bounces to come. Now, granted, did I think a double top was going to be the case of it? No, I thought, I thought, you know, that's why I added right back, right back into view app because I thought this was the bounce I was looking for. And then this fade that we finally got was going to happen right here. We weren't going to get this kind of move. So once we did that, you know, again, I thought I was going to stop out. We pulled. So I did add a little bit more. Uh, and then we just really cracked. And this, you know, this last crack was kind of the end of it and faded ever since. Now, the funny part is, is that I actually put an order to cover at 10 bucks. And I believe the low of this day was like 10.02, um, which is very silly. And I know better to, to put my order exactly at a round number. I usually try to put it a few cents up or above or below for that reason. For whatever reason, I just got lazy and put it at 10. Um, again, the low being 10.02 or whatever it was, I missed covers. But because I did cover some here, I did have some to add. So when it bounced, into the mid 14s, I just had an order sitting. Um, it's easy to say in hindsight that it was actually right near the top. I just got lucky of putting my price there. It could have easily gone to 15, 16. I would probably would have added more, but I just had an order sitting at 1450. Uh, and it filled. I think the high was like 1460 something. And so then we stuffed right into the close. Uh, and then the next day, if we go here, get out of this chart, uh, the next day here, it gapped down sub 10 below, actually right around nine. It did spike. Uh, I did add a little bit back. This wasn't nearly as much as I wanted to, but I kind of added in the sense that like, this is just a whole nother day trade. Like had I not been short overnight, this still would have been kind of like an, uh, a play for me. Like this still would have been looking for more downside. And so it's why I did actually add a little bit. Again, it was like a thousand shares. It wasn't nearly as much as I would have liked. Uh, but then I covered, again, just covered the rest in the pool. And I made like 19, 20 grand. So really, really good win. Um, again, if we go back to the daily chart, just a really, really sick daily chart, right? This, for those who know how I like to trade or what I like to trade, this is gorgeous. And so really good win. Just a really great start to the month. Like I said, it pretty much already, I could have, I could have stopped trading at September 1st and already been an equal month to my August. So that was really, really cool. Anyways, if we go to the next week, specifically on the 6th, uh, I'm actually, there's a video going to come out specifically, uh, or I think it is out. I'm going to, I'll link it here in the description, wherever. Um, specifically my, my money made on AMC and on CGC. AMC was a great short when they announced their ATM here on this day on on the ninth or on the sixth, um, as well as me making a really sweet trade on a CGC breakout. And so I'm not going to go into the detail on those trades, um, because there's a video out there. So I will get, I will link it so you can go there and watch that. But I go in the detail, review those two trades and resulting in, you know, 20 something grand, 23, 24 grand, um, which again was a really, really sick day. Um, so again, watch that in terms of going over the next couple trades is still AMC. So AMC, for those that don't know, like again, this day was because they put on ATM. For those who don't know what ATM is, they put on, it's an offering where they can pretty much sell a certain amount of shares at any price they wanted, hence crushing the stock. Um, and again, this one day doesn't mean that the ATM is done. They still have, I mean, call it a few more days to sell to get all their shares or all the ATM finished. And so every single day I actually was shorting it. Um, I believe I lost a little bit of money here being a little choppy, got a little aggressive. Um, I did take this day off, so I missed this day. But then into this bounce here, I just thought to myself, like, okay, it might shop around a little bit, but they still might sell. They might, they might have a little bit more to sell. And so unfortunately, I did start getting a little bit aggressive, a little bit just too, um, what's the word? I guess, yeah, just aggressive. I just thought they, they would be they'd be able to sell more shares, uh, that they weren't selling as much as they could have got. But I, apparently, you know, the liquidity on AMC is just really, really good. So they actually were able to sell more than I thought, sooner than I thought, I should say. And so if we go into the chart, I... You know, I call it eight, eight, or AMC ATM lessening, or the ATM lessening. Um, lessening's not a good word, but you, if you watch my videos, you know I make up a lot of words. Um, simply because just, just you know, a stock that has an ATM and wants to sell shares doesn't really have a spike like this. It like, doesn't have this kind of a green day unless they completely stop selling or little to no selling. And so I obviously got short out the open thinking they were just going to start selling right away. They, they spiked it, so I covered most of it. I had some a uh, little bit left, just being a little bit stubborn, like almost not really believing it. I thought... Again, just trying to try to stay in the trade, try to keep my mindset of like, okay, the moment they start selling, you know, that's the time to re-add and then actually get the get the fade I wanted. But again, at some point I said I had to kind of throw in the towel and realize that that wasn't the case. And so unfortunately, keeping this ad or keeping this portion of the size on really kind of increased the loss much better than it needed to be had I just cut it all here. Um, on top of that, I thought, okay, it sold off. I, unfortunately, I got distracted with like some other ticker I was trading. So I didn't even think about reshorting it in this move. Um, but finally, once it was chopping around here under view app, I thought, okay, uh, you know, and the volume's diminishing. I thought, okay, you know, maybe it doesn't have a big of a fade as I would have liked, 
But nonetheless, it could easily still sell off back red and maybe go to a low day. And it'd be nice to just catch that, call it 50 cents or so a move. Um, and so I did reshort, unfortunately, and immediately went right back over view up. Once it broke over that high, I just said, nope, I cut it. So I lost maybe a, a thousand or two more, uh, but ultimately ended up losing like $8,600 on this trade, which again, is not a huge loss for me. I've taken many losses of that size, but for what kind of a, of a play it was, knowing that the ATM was on its like lesser end, like knowing that the main majority of the ATM was happening on this day and that each day that it goes on, there's less and less shares to most likely be sold. The fact knowing those things and then still being as aggressive as I was, or maybe just being as stubborn as I was, I think was the mistake because this gets losing much less would have been just a better situation in this particular day. Um, and so, yeah, that led to, I guess, part of this day uh, on the 12th. Um, wasn't fun, but it, it happened. And so I lost like another two grand somewhere else. Uh, and it gave, gave me a my first five figure loss day um, of the month. So there's that. But on, I believe, one of these days in the rest of the week, I had a really, really good win on FWBI. Uh, and again, I'm not one, and I always feel, not weird, I, it's always funny that I, I say this about gap and craps because I just, I don't consider myself a gap and crap trader by any means. But for whatever rhyme or reason, sometimes I gravitated towards some over the others because I don't even check them every day. Like for those who are in the Clover Trading chat room and know how I roll, I rarely, if ever, scan in the morning. I just don't. I, 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 everything on my watch is what I'm already watching, and I rarely look for new tickers. Um, but Kellogg, Jack Kellogg, had kind of talked about FWBI, how he was looking to short it, and and it was it was so funny until after the fact that I figured out why I was so intrigued to it because the moment he brought it up, it was like a no brainer for me. I didn't need to look at anything. I barely looked at the daily chart. I'm like, oh, yep, we're gonna short this. It was like it was so weird. And it wasn't until later in the day that I questioned, like, why was I so willing to take this short? Like, again, even if I take a, a grab and crap trade, I want to make sure there's delusion. I want to make sure there's there's uh, there's a good chance I'm actually going to profit because I don't really like taking them for the reason that sometimes they do squeeze very hard and much higher. And so I just didn't even think about it until after the fact. I'm like, why on earth was I so willing and like so unconsciously just immediate willing to take this trade? And it, and, it, and it didn't hit down on me until I looked back at my trades and I shorted it this day and made a lot of really good money. Um, the, the last time it gapped up huge, it was a beautiful gap and crap. And again, it's so funny because I remember looking at the daily chart and saying, oh, it's done it before. But I had completely forgot about the fact that I actually had traded it this day and made some money. And now, why did I get attracted to it on this day? I'm pretty sure I remember looking at the dilution like, oh, they're, they're dilutive. Like they, they can dilute today. And hence they did. Um, and it's just so funny because I didn't do that due diligence this time. But I was just so immediate. I'm like, yep, we're going to short this. And had no idea why until I finally decided to question it. And it was funny. I actually had made money on this last time. So just one of those like subconscious things of trading so long. I just remembered that ticker so so vividly or subconsciously that I uh, I just took a part in it. So what on earth actually happened? Um, I'm not too proud of actually how it happened. Uh, mainly because I just could have had a better entry than I did. And if we go into the trade here, let's go here. Um, here we are. So I, I started in and it just doesn't look like I started in cause I have a few candles, but it was just a few candles spread out thinking it was, again, it's kind of the same idea as ICCT. I just thought I, unfortunately I need to, something I need to get better at is giving it more time. Um, because giving it three minutes just is not enough time to see it actually spike. As you can see by minute four and five, it's clearly already a better average or better entry into the $1 area. Um, but unfortunately I just had started it into that move into those first couple of minutes and then it starts squeezing. And so in my idea, I was like, you know what, this, this probably shouldn't hold over a dollar for at least a couple minutes. Um, and then it certainly shouldn't really go well over 120, 130. Like at some point, the, the good thing about starter is, is that if it's small enough, you can give yourself a lot of wiggle room, but you also don't want to fall down the, the, the slat slippery slope of like, well, I can risk way further than I normally would. Right. And so I knew above 110, above 120 was hitting that benchmark of like, yeah, it's a starter. But if I let it 120, do I let it 130? Do I let it 140? Do I let it 150? It's like, no, that's so, so for me, like the cutoff was 120 ish at the worst. Um, along top of the fact that I knew, or I, at least I thought in my brain, this shouldn't hold over $1 for very long, right? If this is going to be dilutive, if this is going to sell off, like I think it should in my brain, this should not hold a dollar like very well. Okay. And so looking at that, you know, after a couple minutes, like again, it was over a buck for one, two, th like three minutes, pretty much. Right. That that's perfect in line with what I was thinking. Um, it did immediately fail right back down. And then, and unfortunately, 
And this is why I say I need to get better at my entries, because had I not taken the starter, I would have loved starting in on the backside and getting it actually above a dollar average, like shorting it into this or even shorting the starter into strength and then adding it once it got weak. Unfortunately, I did, you know, not the worst, but I could have done better in the sense that that's what I would have liked to do. Instead, I had a starter here, didn't add because I had my starter art. And instead of adding, I was thinking like, well, crap, I had my finger on the trigger of like, if we go 120, like I'm going to have to stop out. Um, and then it failed. And then I finally realized, okay, once it's not coming back, it's clearly weak. It's failed under a dollar. It's clearly now had multiple lower highs now at 95. Now, like almost a double top in the 90s. Um, that's finally when I decided to add right into here. Um, full size now, pretty much risking that 110. Um, knowing that if it goes over that, like there's no need to still 120 or let's, let's do 150. Like, no, once you're full size, that is now when, like I said, Starter size, it's it's a kind of a slippery slope, so you need some kind of cutoff. But once you're full size, there is there is no room for any kind of slippery slope. It's like you need a cutoff. And so for me, 110, that high a day was that level once I added this here. Then not a few minutes later, we sold off, chopped a bit, and then we got a midday offering. Um, and it's funny, and, and this adds into the idea of why I was so unconscious about why I was so willing to trade it, because the last gap on crap day, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive, they had a midday offering or they had some kind of midday news that I think dropped it and then spiked it a little bit. But by the end of the day, it went much lower than it's morning low because of that PR or whatever was said. So it's just so funny that again, the same time that I'm shorting it, don't know really why, another midday offering. So this company is just one of those turds that just constantly, if they're given a chance, they're gonna dilute. And so then immediately I started covering, covered more into pieces as it sold off. Um, Kind of got lucky here that the last piece was like right near the low. But again, it was like a fifth of my size. So it's not a big deal. But ultimately, I ended up making, what did I make on it? Uh, like 11 grand, okay? Which again, is way better than I would have ever expected from a gap and crap. Like I said, for someone like me who doesn't really trade gap and craps that much, I never also expect that much from them because they're not my bread and butter. They're not something that is really part of my day in, day out strategy. So to catch and midday offering and then have this thing go much lower because of it really turned into a four to five K winner into a 10 K plus winner. So that was really, really sick. Um, really, really cool. And just unexpected. So that was a great like add on to, to my profitability at the end of the month. Um, in terms of the next couple of trades, we also go into NKLA NKLA was a really good runner. Um, I actually did make money on this long on the first day, but I actually have another video coming out talking about that as well. So stay tuned for that one. The trade I specifically want to talk about, which was a 10K trade as well, another trade that just you know changes the bottom line, was this day. And it's so funny because it doesn't look like a lot, right? Um, when you look at this daily chart, it looks like any one of these days you could trade to make money. And so had it not told you, it's like very hard to distinguish that this day would have been the day. Um, granted, it looks more like of a, just a bounce on the backside of the move. But then when you actually look at it, it's gone from the 80 cent range all the way as high as 160. So in over three days, like one, two, three, I mean, that's, that's right in my wheelhouse, like three days of running up a hundred percent or more on the minimum. And we were right there. And on top of that, it doesn't, you, know, you can't really see it unless you really look, but these three days, it actually never went red on the day. Um, and I know it's a bit confusing because it had a red candle here, but if you look at it, the close on this day is 115. Okay, the low is 115, so it held red green perfectly, didn't go red. It closed here uh, at 119, and the low here is 123. Okay, and now we have now we're up, and we closed at what 159? Excuse me. So 80 cents to 159, roughly 100 percent, and it hasn't really broken that red green mark yet. Mark yet. Okay, that's something I noticed. That's an indicators I look for. And so if we go into that day, I knew I'm like, okay, if this goes red, it's not, the, again, it's not the most ideal thing in the world, um, right? It's not the daily chart, like ICCT ideal, but nonetheless, I have to trust the indicators that have made me that kind of money over the long term. And so if it goes red, I need to be shorting, risking some level, looking to catch that morning panic or that morning weakness um, from selling, from the selling pressure that's likely to happen. And so that's exactly what I did. If we go into the actual intraday here, the trades, um, that's exactly what I did. I waited, you know, in hindsight or in not even hindsight, some people would argue like it's better to get short sooner to have a better risk reward idea. But it's like, no, I want to, and in, th in this case, I wanted to wait for the higher odds, lower risk rewards play, then get short before it goes red, actually holds red and then spikes to say $182 or whatever it is and take a loss that I didn't really need to because it never actually gave me my full entry kind of trigger. Um, trigger price or trigger movement, I should say. So when I went red, I just shorted. 
Like I went full size right away, gonna risk the highs. Um, I call it 168, 169-ish, whatever these little two levels here are. And it just works. I mean, right away, it, it panicked. I let it chop around a little bit. Um, usually the first 30 minutes to an hour is like roughly when you're going to see the, the weakness or the selling. And so it's really no coincidence that right into that 30 minute mark, right at 10 o'clock, um, I, I was looking for sub 140. And so the fact that we kind of just made that new low day to like 138, 137 ish, um, I covered the rest and it bounced. Now, did I know it was going to bounce? No, I actually, in the moment, I actually remember getting filled and thought to myself, man, this might go to like 133, 132. And I kind of had regret covering. But then it immediately bounced, and then not only that, but it actually then chopped all day long, and you never saw below 140 again. Um, so one of those one of those things where I just kind of got a little bit lucky. I, I in in terms of not being greedy, actually led to me making more money. And I say that because there's many trades I'll take at the time where, like I said, I covered, and I think the stock's going lower. So then I feel like greedy, and I reshort, or I think I'm like, damn, I shouldn't have covered. And ends up leading to me actually losing money or giving money back because I cancel my order. I keep the shares the size I have to thinking, trying to get a few more cents lower. And then it actually bounces and I give back profits having to cover for higher. So this is one of those scenarios where I actually fought my own greed, covered anyway, even though in the moment I thought it was going lower. And what do you know? It ended up being right near the bottom, which is great. Um, so yeah, I made like perfectly just over 10 grand. Um, and again, it's a, what, a, what I took off like 159 down to 139 call, like 20 cent move. Uh, it's not a huge range wise, but again, like it was like what, 10, 15%. It was a very quick 10 grand. Uh, one of the more efficient 10 grand trades I've had in a long time where it was just like very simple, very simplistic. I just shorted the every move. I covered in the morning, the morning action. That was that. Um, I just did not expect to make 10 grand that day. So that was again, a really, just a good, um, add on to the bottom line of my month of just like this really unexpected move. Uh, but nonetheless, I, it was a move I knew I needed to take because of the reasons I mentioned on the daily chart, right? The indicators were there. I took it and it just happened to be better than I expected. So that was really, really cool. Unfortunately, I ended up giving a lot of that profits back, not on NKLA, but I ended up having actually taking some weed socks long. Um, again, CGC on this day into this day was the day I actually made money on it and made like 10 K plus on the breakout, which again, which will be in that other video with AMC. Unfortunately, I did miss this huge move long. Um, I did get chopped up pretty big on it short, which I also talked about really in detail in a webinar with for the Clover, and we can go over it really quickly. But essentially on the 12th, and this is with, this is with a, or ACB and CGC, um, unfortunately, it, just, it kind of, or anyone who was short that day, it was like a squeeze from hell. Um, it really was this, this huge kind of morning strength to the point where it happened so quick. I was like, what on earth happened? I mean, I just got crushed so quick. Uh, I remember shorting it out the open, risking, you know, red green to previous day's highs. Ideally, in this case scenario, I was willing to be aggressive um, and risk the previous day's highs um, with room to add if it spiked to red green. So I did get short, it pulled, and then it spiked to red green. So I add in like the 160 area. And then, and then like, if you look at the chart, next thing I know, I'm covering over high day at 180 for like a, I lost like 13 grand or so there. I lost like 15 or 16 grand on ACB. I was down like 30 plus grand, um, given all, a couple other losses, like immediately. And I was like, holy crap, this happened so quick. But the, I've seen this before where, again, anyone who's early short selling, like me in this case, in this case, it was early. Once everyone got squeezed out, there was no level of bidding left. And so that's pretty much what happened. I ended up reshorting it um, on this backside move. Same thing with ACB. Uh, and in, in CGC's case, it actually was much weaker. So I ended up covering it all in the like 130s down here and not taking it overnight, even though it actually ended up going lower. A um, little bit of a mistake on my part. I would have liked in hindsight to have said I, I, I waited a little bit longer, was a little more patient. Um, unfortunately, I just pretty much made my losses back. It, it, it turned into damage control more than anything, um, as well as CG, or ACB. ACB, I actually did hold overnight because if you look at ACB's daily chart here, it wasn't as weak as CGC. Um, so because it wasn't, I thought to myself, it's still going to follow it. And because it hadn't gone red yet, it was this day. We actually closed slightly green. So because I thought it was a little bit delayed behind CGC, I did take ACB overnight because I thought to myself, you know what? We're due for lower just in terms of, of a range wise. I think, and I thought CGC had sold off decently enough, but because ACB hadn't yet, I did hold it overnight. And what do you know? That sell off that happened on AC or at CGC that I wasn't there for, I did capture it. Um, on ACB. And again, like I said, same thing uh, for the morning. I got short, then got squeezed, reshorted in these, these lower highs, took it overnight, and then covered at like 80, like 80, maybe 79 of the highest right up here. 
Um, again, only unfortunately making really my losses back. It, it sucks that I just was too aggressive too early because it led to just me reshorting for damage control, not for me actually making profits. Um, but I got sidetracked anyway, <laughs> besides those two trades and that part of that, that part of the month. On the day I made 10K on NKLA, which I believe is one of these days here. No, it was this day um, on the 19th. It led to me giving money back because I ended up taking them long. So for those who know why the weed stocks ran in the first place, was because they have the vote coming up. I think it already happened. It was in the end of September, but they had like the safe billing or banking act coming in for weed stocks, which again, any kind of progression in legislation for weed stocks always brings in some kind of some hype and some sector momentum because people have been waiting for you know, just more legalization, more legislation for years. I mean, if we look at any of these weed stock charts, they've been just crushed because they, they just can't operate business. Um, the way they want, given given the rules and the laws. Now, nonetheless, does that make them? Does that mean they could be good company, good companies? If not, I mean that's up to the fundamentals of the of the value of the company. That's not really what I'm here for. All I know is over this course of the period, they've just got crushed over and over and over again because many of these actually do a lot of dilution. Um, in this case, CGC did a lot of dilution in this run up. Um, but nonetheless, I was long. I didn't long ACB. But I was long CGC. I did long like ACAN. ACAN was like a lower float sympathy that I, me and a couple other uh, people thought that this was going to actually run a little bit more. Again, a little bit on the liquid side. But when this was running, I thought to myself, all it needs is one really big volume day to really get going, given it's a low float. Um, so unfortunately, had some long up here, you know, on this like consolidation for a few days, but then sold off and as it started breaking down. Same thing with AC or CGC. Did the same thing. Um, again, in this range, but then once it started selling off, I said, nope, screw it. We're, we're dying. We're not, we're not sticking, we're sticking around. Um, so gave a little bit back on the long side of things there, but that's okay. Not a big deal. End of the month or end of the week, small and green, really the, the most not frustrating, but disappointing part of my month was this last week. Cause it was so funny because I, I remember making a few stories. Um, and even talked about it on, on like on wine Wednesday with Huddy about how good I was doing in September, of how well I was picking my points, like just picking, going in the market, out of the market, taking time off, right? Only trading two days this week and still closing out green because there just wasn't much going on. Um, you know, even trading, not even trading on this last day or less last Tuesday, just very willing to not trade at all because my month was so good. And we just weren't in a very hot, um, you know, momentous or momentous market. And unfortunately, this is why I say it's disappointing because in this last week, I just kind of, I guess maybe you could say lost discipline or just got into not trading mode into trading mode, trying to like, trying to not make something happen, but just trading more than I needed to, needed to. And so let's go into those trades that kind of gave back some of those profits. Um, if we close down, we'll close down ACB and ACAN because we pulled it up there. Um, but specifically the first one here was SLNO. Um, SLNO was a huge gapper from four bucks all the way up to 20 and then ran to like 26, 27. I was looking at kind of a first red day move. Um, again, it's only had one green day, so the red day isn't as likely, but nonetheless, you know, when we're up hundreds of percent in one single day, there's likely going to be some profit taking. And so that's exactly what I was looking for. Um, on top of the fact, there's a lot of talk about like, oh, their warrants are going to become available. I had was willing to get short knowing that that may help. Turns out after the fact, it didn't help at all. They, I, from my understanding, they haven't used any of it, um, any of that dilution. So the problem here was, is that I just had a wrong trade plan. Um, and it will, I'll show, you'll see when I show in the chart, you know, for those who know how to trade or how I like to trade an overextended gap down, I really, really like picking the best risk possible, which in this case is usually red green. Sometimes the previous day high, like I did on ACB and CGC, but in SLNO's case, the last thing I'm going to do is short at 23 and risk 30, right? It just, you can't risk. I'm not going to risk close to almost 50%. Um, or 30, 40%, you know, in that kind of a move with that much range. And so I got short originally thinking I should risk red green. Unfortunately, I got like too, I don't know if I call it greed, but I just got aggressive thinking, okay, you know, I don't need to risk that level. I can just risk some bounce high or some morning spike high that it makes right in that moment. And for those who know how usually this works, that's usually a terrible idea. Um, again, let's get rid of NKLA. It usually leads you to risking a level that was set literally for a minute which usually means it's not meaningful at all. And so what happens is, is like, yeah, so I short a little bit of pre-market, short a little bit more out of the open, cut it. Like, oh, the morning spiked. It's not selling. Short some more, right? Just barely makes a new high. I'm like, okay, I can risk that level. It fades off. I think it's going to be weak. Okay, add some more. It spikes, double tops. I'm like, oh, okay, let's, let's just see how high it goes. 
you know, pops one more time, then fails. I'm like, okay, now we're going to risk this high. And what do you know? One more high, I cut that. And that's the actual high of the day, right? And then it fades and actually go lower where I thought it would go, right? Had I been more patient, had I just not been so, again, aggressive, had I gone in with the plan that I usually always go with, which is, hey, I might start in, but I really want to bounce or a spike higher so I can add into that bounce and then risk the red green, right? Right. And had I done that, not only would I not have taken all these ads to be aggressive, but I wouldn't have been cutting. I actually would have been adding here, right? It's so funny how, like how, and it's so important how, how you structure your trade plan can really make the difference in that moment of whether you're cutting or adding. Um, and again, in an overextended gap down case that happens a lot of the times where usually when you feel like cutting is actually the time to be adding or entering. And this was a perfect example. Right. And then of course, I don't even know what this is. This is a terrible, I don't know, know why I decided to reshort here. It was actually awful. And so I immediately cut it when I came back. I'm like, this is dumb. Um, late day. Yes, it did go lower, but again, I, I had already, I already had screwed myself up with making a terrible trade plan up here. Um, and by that time, because I just made a dumb chasing tra chase here, uh, these bounces actually would have been good times to actually re short. Um, cause you got you can, can at least get like the similar entries that I could have gotten in the morning had I been patient. But, uh, but I just had thrown the towel. I knew I kind of screwed up really bad or just royally um, not having the right trade plan. And so I kind of, I lost five grand between this two days. Unfortunately, it should have easily been a five grand or more plus win. Um, so one of those things where, you know, I don't regret taking the trade. I like how I took the trade, but the wrong trade plan was made. Okay, so that's that one. The other one here, and this is the kicker that really unfortunately brought this ugly of a day, my ugliest day of the month, was from SJ. Now, SJ, I believe, is under the the whole, I, I knew after the fact, the whole scammy kind of China liquidation plays. Um, not necessarily as bad, because but it's happened in the past where they'll, they'll dump it a couple times. And so I had suspicions that they were going to do it today too. And again, looking at the daily chart, it looks like they dumped it. Like, they didn't dump it down 80%, but they dumped it like 30 or 40%. Um, unfortunately, when you go on the intraday, it's a very different story. And unfortunately, I got caught in it. Um, thankfully much smaller size. Cause again, if you watch my last video in August, we went over RETO, which really screwed my month up, um, which really opened up the door to what and how risky these can be. And you hear me talk about in the video, of like, I'm trying to contemplate in my head of like, if they're even worth it. And unfortunately, you know, there were some other plays earlier in the month that made, like it made it look like they were coming back. Like the edge of why so many traders traded these in the first place looked like they were trying to happen again. And so here I am saying, okay, well, there, some are working, some some are still trying to work again. Let's give S, SJ a try. And unfortunately, you know, you look at a move like this and clearly it's not. <laughs> this looks a lot like RETO. Um, it looks a lot like HKIT uh, back when it did this same move. And so unfortunately, I and, and the reason why I'm disappointed so much about it is because I kind of saw it coming. Um, given the volume, like this volume is, is decent, but it's not great. Uh, there was never any true big, big selling like you usually used to see. And so, you know, let's just go on the trades to show you. Like I, I took I took a majority of my size here and only a small size here, thank God. Um, overall, I had way less size than I did at RETO, which I'm very happy about. Like at least, you know, maybe I have to take multiple losses before I finally just give up on these things. But at least every single time I'm reducing my size. Um, but nonetheless, you know, once it halted up twice here, and this is why I'm disappointed, once it halted up twice, I kind of knew, I'm like, crap, they're going to pull this. They're going to do this. They're going to do what they always do. Um, they're going to play those games where they squeeze everybody out. Why I didn't cover, I don't know. Um, I, I think it was more denial than anything that like, you know what? No, like they're going to sell it off. Like maybe it was just hope. Uh, but I just knew if they talk it over highs, like I'm getting out at any price and I don't really care. Hence why you see me covering there. Um, unfortunately, again, same with RETO. That was the high. But again, if you go watch that video in August, I go in much more deeper detail of like how much the bigger the risk could be. And so at that point, it's just not worth it for me. I said, nope, we don't, I don't care if this is the high today. I'm, I'm getting out. I'm taking my losses. Um, even dumber though, I don't reshort to catch this low or this catch move. And so what do you know? I'm chasing now. I'm now I'm tilted, chasing smaller size, covering it there, shorting some again, shorting lower, covering it there. So ultimately I ended up losing 16 grand on this, which again is sounds bad. But if you looked at my RETO was way worse um, and more frequent, this is just one time and I just gave it up. Um, of course, a couple extra like smaller, you know, FOMO or just revenge trading attempts, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing really crucial. Again, I, I lost like 12K on this one and then just an extra 2K each attempt here. So by no means is it like detrimental, but again, it's disappointing. Um, I, it's disappointing that I took this trade or let it happen how it would have 
given that I just knew, I just, I remember telling myself like, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. Like they're going to, they're going to do what they always do. And why I didn't get out at least anywhere sooner than up here. Um, I couldn't tell you. I just, I, I, I would scratch it up to hope. I just was like hoping, you know, I was like, oh, maybe they won't do it. You know, newsflash, they did it. <laughs> so, um, that's that. And again, that's just pretty much the end of the month there, right? That puts me down here. Um, this trade was on BNOX. It was really just kind of came up to a scratch trade. It just didn't go as low as I thought. Um, given that there's been a lot of gappers, right? Like SLNO was a really good gapper that went up and now is actually holding near its breakout level. BNOX was another one, not NBOX. BNOX was another one that I didn't really take part of as a gap and crap, but I wanted to take care of it, or I want to take care of it. I wanted to take part of it on this day. And so I did make some money, but again, only a thousand bucks ended up being, I think something came out in after hours because now it's kind of come back up. But nonetheless, that's the month. Uh, ended up being $61,000. And 61,265 and 69 cents. Um, very happy. Again, going now into the last three months of the year typically are better for me in my own experience. Not not tremendously better. Really, sub December specifically is kind of the beginning of that, you know, call it winter heat. The December through February were like usually the hottest time of the year for, for at least small caps. Um, so we'll see. We're going to take it month by month. I have really no hard or, or high expectations for October. I really would love to keep doing what I've been doing for September, which is just, if I see a good trade, I'll take it. If not, I take off. Like again, this last two weeks, I took more naps than I have in a very long time. In fact, most of the year I haven't taken any naps, but this two weeks I was like, yep, we're going back to sleep. Uh, Cause not much was happening. So we will see how that goes. But other than that guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I appreciate all you guys who want to, you know, keep up to me or keep up with me in my month and my journey here. So uh, thanks so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.